There used to be a time in my life when I would have something called quiet time. But I don't have any quiet time anymore. I don't know, do you feel like you ever have any quiet time? I remember when uh, the kids were, were young. And I remember, I remember hearing these pitter-patter of little feet coming through the darkness of the house, right over to the bedside. And a little bitty face came so close to mine, I could feel, I could feel the breath. I didn't open my eyes. And all of a sudden, that, that little voice said, Daddy, are you asleep? And I would say, yes, I'm asleep. It's dark. Go back to bed. Now, when the grandkids come over, that whole thing started again. Well, how is it that these, these, these kids, I mean, they wake up at 4.30 in the morning? What demon is possessing them to bring them out of this wonderful, peaceful, tranquil sleep to come in and wake me up? Wake up your Nana. Don't wake me up. There's no quiet time. There's no quiet time. There's no quiet time in, in, you know, in most of our lives. I mean, from the very beginning of, of the morning, you've got this alarm that goes off. This obnoxious alarm. It goes off. And then, and I, I'm, and, and then there's this voice in my head, and I'm trying to figure this out. I hear the alarm, the eh, 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 you know, and there's a voice inside that says, I better get up. And I'm thinking, my God, that's my voice. Why am I saying that? What, what is going on in my brain? Got to get up. Got to get up. And then I stumble into the kitchen, and there's this, there's this little, little thing on the ledge above the sink. Alexa. And she's talking to me like, I don't want to talk to you. Who are you? And then I don't know why, but it just seems so quiet. I have to turn the TV on. You know, I turn it over to the news. Why am I doing that? That TV stays on 24 hours a day almost, right? And then there's the ding on the watch and the phone. Ding. You got a, you got a text message. Ding. You got an email. Ding. You need to breathe a little bit more. You're not going to make it. Ding, you haven't met your exercise goal for the day. Ding, ding, ding. And when I get a ding and it's a text message, I go on a look at it and I start reading it. And, and the text message, it, it, begins, to, it begins to say, uh, don't, don't forget, don't forget uh, uh, to get some yogurt and some milk and some cookies. I'm reading it. I'm reading this. And honest to God, I hear Darla's voice. I'm reading it, but I'm hearing her voice, you know. Get some yogurt, get some, uh, uh, you know, get some milk, get some cookies. And, and, and as I'm reading it, I hear, she, she's explaining it to me. Get some yogurt. I want banana and I want strawberry and I want the kind with the active yeast cultures that are in it. And get the milk. It's got to be 2% milk. Not, not whole milk, 2% milk. And then I got to get cookies. That means pecan sandies. And I hear that voice. I hear that voice going off in my head. How is it that you read a text message and as you're reading it, you hear the voice of sender? Have you, have you ever noticed that? You hear the voice. Music's constantly on everywhere I go. News is always telling us uh, constantly what to worry about, what to think, who's wrong, the cataclysm that's, that's about to come upon all of us. And it doesn't matter whether you're in home or you're in the doctor's office or whether you're in the grocery store, it's there all the time and just voices, voices, voices. And then I hear these voices, you know, voices from the past. Do you hear voices from the past? I can't, I can't tell you, I mean, I'm grown. I mean, this has been, 
This has been a hundred years ago, but I, I can, I can, I, I still have some things to do, and I'm thinking like, what do I not have to do today because I want to do something else? And I, I, hear, I hear this voice, and it says, Chad, you have to get your chores first done, and then you can go play. And I hear this voice, it's my mother. It is my mother. And then I hear the voice, Chad, you got to put your bike inside the garage when you're done riding it. That would be my dad. I can hear him saying that to me. I hear this voice, Chad, I'm telling mom. That would be my younger brother. And I heard that a lot. And then I hear, that I, I, I'd be doing something and it's just not working out. And I'm, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm trying to write an article for a Spirit News or I'm sitting down to, you know, working on a sermon and I start scratching out some ideas and, you know, what am I going to say and how's it going to go? You know, and I hear this voice, Chad, is this the best you can do? That would be mom again. And dad would be saying, yes, Chad, is that the best that you can do? So I've got all these crazy voices going on. And then I got these voices from the past. And, and then I got my voice. I'm not saying anything, but the voice is there in my head. You know, the voice that says, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. No, I'm mad at him. I'm not going to talk to him. How in the world am I going to fix that? Why can't I... Uh, uh, and my voice never stops. It's, it's always going on. And it's not like all these voices take turns. They're all just piling on top, over, all, all at the same time. All these voices, do you hear these voices? Please, please shake your head and say yes, that I am not the only one in the world that hears these voices. <laughs> you hear these voices too. I know when you go home from church, you hear my voice too. And it doesn't go away, does it? That's right. That's right. You hear voices. And, and all these voices and so much stuff going on constantly. And you know, a lot of that, I think, I don't need these voices. I don't need this. But the one voice that I really need is the voice of God. Really, I mean, so I can hear it. So I can clearly listen to it. Because, you know, in times like we're living in right now, don't we really need to hear the voice of God? We really do. And I'm, and I'm telling you, in, in, because during times like this, the, the voices, they just get louder and they get louder. And we really need to hear the voice of God. And I want to talk about that today. The voice of God and hearing the voice of God. Jesus explained this in John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. Anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by, the, by some other way is a thief and a robber. The one who enters the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and he leads them out. When he has brought them out, all his own, he goes ahead of them and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. You know, Jesus is painting this picture. He's the good shepherd. And he's talking about his relationship to us. We're the sheep. And, and he's, he's saying so many wonderful things that he has come to guide and lead us in life. He has, he has come to help us, you know, through times like we're in right now, difficult times. And if you understand how 
shepherds and their sheep related in biblical days, in Jesus' day, that there were certain places that in the evenings, several shepherds would bring all their sheep and all the sheep of the different flocks they would mix together. And, and maybe the, she, the shepherds would draw straws and the, the guy that got, you know, the short one, he had to do night duty watching all the sheep. And they would take turns and, and watching the entire flock by the rest, while the rest of the shepherds, they got some sleep. But in the morning, the shepherd, he would have trained his sheep to hear his voice. And the shepherd would just walk through the middle of all the sheep call out their name. Hey, this here, he had name for his own sheep. He'd call them, he'd call them. And the sheep could recognize the voice of their shepherd. And this is a very simple thing. It, it's basic shepherding back in Jesus' day. The shepherd would go and he would walk through the sheep and he would talk to them and encourage them to follow him. And these sheep from all over the, the, the gathered flock that was there, they would all follow along and pretty soon he had his sheep and he was taking them out for their day in the pastures. Now, the sheep, they knew the voice of the shepherd. But there's other people that come and they try to steal sheep and that's a thief. And the, sheep come, and the thief comes in and he tries to call them. He tries to get them to follow, but the sheep won't follow him because they don't know his voice. Because the sheep has one intention, that's to rob, to kill, and destroy. And sheep won't follow someone that they don't know his voice. You know, this is, this is telling us so much. Especially us who hear all these voices all the time, right? And are trying to sort out which one to focus on and which one to listen to. And what, and what, what Jesus is telling us is that there are voices that will try to hurt you, will try to tear you down. Voices whose intent are to rob, to kill, and destroy. And, and we, we hear voices like that, right? That mean us harm, that try to cut us down, that, that, that try to take advantage of us. We, we hear those voices and... We should, we should be alarmed by that. We should be alarmed by those voices. And Jesus says, the beautiful thing here is that in a world where there are so many voices that you can't trust and you, you shouldn't listen to and you can't follow, in a world that's full of so many of those kind of voices, he says that you have the capacity to hear God's voice. That's what, this, that's what this story and this teaching is telling us. You can hear the voice of God. And maybe you're thinking to yourself, I, I, I've, never heard, I've never heard the voice of God. But that voice of God is there. It is what you have the capacity. And every follower of Jesus, everyone who has faith in Jesus, can hear His voice. Because... Jesus knows you. And you can recognize his voice and know the voice of Jesus and, and what he is speaking to you. The things that he is saying to you, they don't cut you down, they don't hurt you, they don't lead you astray, but the voice of Jesus brings you life. Life in its fullness and in its abundance. That is what the voice of Jesus speaking to us brings us. Life. Real life. You know, and even, even, even before you knew Jesus, and even if you don't know Jesus very well right now, and even though you can think that there's some, you can, you can say, you know, I'm just coming here for today. I'm not sure I'm ever going to come back again. I'm not sure I want to hear any more of that, but I'm, I'm giving it a chance today, even if you're in that kind of place. Jesus is speaking to you. And he has a message for you to bring you life. 
even if, even if you feel like you're not close to him, he's still speaking to you. And you can hear him. And there are voices that you need to silence right now today. Silent voice, silence voices that are not good for you. That are not telling you the truth. Voices that are saying things to you that will never bring you life, but they'll mess up your life. And they'll confuse your thinking and they'll lead you in directions that you shouldn't go and you will regret. And I want to talk about some of those voices. The voices you shouldn't listen to. And some of those voices are the voices from the past, right? Some of those voices from the past where maybe somebody in your life just told you over and over again that you were a loser. You shouldn't listen to that voice. Or someone told you you're never going to amount to anything. Maybe you had a teacher that, you know, she, you, you swore she graded you down a grade on everything you did because she didn't like you. And, and maybe she didn't. <laughs> maybe you were right. She didn't. And you still feel, you still feel like you are a grade below everybody else in the world. Maybe somebody told you you didn't matter, that you'd never amount to anything. That no one was ever going to love you because you were such a, a screwed up person. Those voices, don't listen to those. Don't listen to one of them. Those, those voices from the past, man, they're the, ones that, they're the ones that get us. Because those voices and what they said, they, they dig deep down into your soul. They get planted inside of you. And, you, and even though as you, you've grown through this and you've endured the situations out of which you came and the places and the times of your life where you were told all those things, they've dug in deep inside of you and, and, those, and those voices, you know, they, they almost like haunt you. They almost like haunt you. Then there's the voices that you've heard from, I hate to say this, but maybe some other Christians. You know? Because sometimes we sh share ideas and concepts and, and ideas that really aren't what the Bible say. I know you've heard some of those things. Voices that says that Jesus loves good boys and good girls. You know, I, I, remember, I remember when I was young and, and uh, in, my, in my family, we were a backseater family. That means we always sat in the very back of the church. You know, and, and before we go into church, you know, Dad says, okay, boys, I don't want y'all to be making no noise in church today. I don't want you to be grabbing each other. I want you to sit there, and I want you to listen. I want you to be good boys. So I thought, oh, okay, good boys just sit and do nothing, right? <laughs> don't make any noise. Don't cause any trouble. And if I didn't cause any trouble and I was kind of quiet and, you know, just then on the way home, Mom would say, oh, you boys are really good in church today. Now, you know, they were, they, they were just trying to protect the congregation <laughs> from us, right? And, and the stuff that, and the bedlam and the chaos that we could, we could bring into an entire church service, you know, if we weren't kept restrained. I mean, they, they were just looking out for the rest of the church, but, you know, this, this message that Jesus loves good boys and good girls. You, you need to not listen to that. Because sometimes you can think that when you're not good, that Jesus doesn't care about you, or maybe he's angry with you. And maybe if you haven't been good for a long time, and maybe if things aren't working out in your life, and, and, and you are feeling pretty depressed about yourself, you can just add one other thing to the list. Jesus doesn't like you either. And we do that because we're listening to that voice that says Jesus just loves good boys, or Jesus loves good boys and good girls. 
And I know the people that told you that didn't understand what they were doing. I remember there were several times when one of my kids was, you know, did something, and I mean, you know, you know when you feel this heat that just kind of starts, you know, on, you know, on your chest, just right. I mean, you just you could fry an egg on your forehead, you know, just like you can't believe what they just did, you know. And I, and and there were a few times where I caught myself and I said, "Bad boy, bad boy, that's a bad boy." Well, you know, they were young and what else could I say what else could they they understood that and there's a part of me that just kind of regrets the thought that maybe deep down in, inside of them they could possibly think that they were a bad boy they weren't a bad boy they were doing something bad but they weren't bad boys they, they weren't a bad girl and how many times have you know have people said well God hadn't answered your prayer because you know you know maybe you're just not Praying hard enough. You know? What have you, been, what have you done that God is not, not, not answering your prayer? It isn't, isn't coming through for you. Don't listen to those voices. That's not true. God just doesn't reward you with good stuff because you helped him out by being good. And then there's this, you know, when you, just, when you just can't get things to work out in life, when you, when, you know, your life just isn't firing on all cylinders. You're out of timing. Things don't fit together. And, and, you, think, and, and you think to yourself, what's wrong with me? What is wrong with me? I just can't get it together. People that say, well, what's wrong with you? And the people that have said things that have led you to that conclusion about yourself, that don't listen to those voices. Don't listen to those voices. You know, sometimes life just gets weird. It's get, it gets difficult. It's not you. It may be other people around you. And sometimes you just, you just say, you know, where's Jesus? Where's Jesus? When I was being hurt. Where's Jesus right now where I'm hurting? Doesn't Jesus understand how bad this is going to get? Why doesn't he do something about this? Jesus must not listen to me. Jesus must not care about me. Don't listen to those voices. Don't listen to those voices. And then, and then in addition to the voices from the past and the voices that, that you have heard from well-meaning people that kind of like you and kind of love you and but have said these weird things to you these wrong things to you there's these voices from our our own life experiences and they go around in our heads and you know you know these voices they sound like us talking see I can identify when it's mom and dad talking to me from the past right I can understand I, I hear the voice of of people that I knew in my life I didn't get along with maybe it's my fault Maybe it's their fault, you know, and, and things that didn't work out and conflicts I, I couldn't resolve and all that. I mean, I hear their voices in their voices. But there's a lot of these things I hear in my voice. Isn't that freaky? These, these, these conclusions that you make from life, life experiences, man, you're going to hear those in your own voice. You, it's going to sound like you're talking to yourself. Because you've just gone through something and you've come to the conclusion that my life is never going to be like it, like I want it to be because I'm not like him or her. And I tell you when it sounds, when you hear it in your voice, well, that's, that's hard to straighten out. But if you find yourself telling yourself this, don't listen to it. Don't listen to that voice. You're wrong. <laughs> You really are wrong. That I'm not smart enough, I'm not pretty enough. How many times have you tried something and it just didn't work? You just kind of failed. I'm not smart enough. You know. If I'd have done this or if I'd have done that, well, maybe this would work out. And that voice inside of you said, you're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not good enough. And don't listen to that voice. 
you are telling yourself something that's wrong. Don't listen to yourself. That I've been damaged. That I've been damaged and, and there's no way I can ever be fixed. We, we kind of get to that conclusion, right? Don't listen to that voice. That's not right when you tell yourself that. And when you think to yourself, I'm hopeless and I'm helpless. There's no hope for me. Don't listen to that voice. You've come to the wrong conclusion. That's the wrong lesson. That's the wrong principle. No one will ever love me because maybe somebody didn't. Somebody left you. No one will ever love me. I'm not lovable. If you say that to yourself, don't listen to that voice. That voice is wrong. I know those voices are coming from deep places, but they are being spoken and you're hearing them in your own, in your own voice. You're hearing them, but those are the voices of the thief who comes to rob, steal, and destroy. Rob, steal, and destroy. And look at what they're robbing you of. They're robbing you of who you are. They're stealing from you hope. They're taking life away from you because if you listen to those, whatever, you, whatever you're calling living, it won't be life. It'll be miserable. You'll find yourself in your self-made prisons. It'll be torture. And so many people behind the smiles and you know, the cut, the cut grass and, and the pretty home that they're living in, they're in prisons. They're miserable. They're hurting. Because these ideas, these, these things, they're spoken to us. They rob, they kill, and they destroy. And they don't, just, they don't just do that to us. They do that to everybody else around us. You know what Jesus is saying what Jesus is saying is that the picture he's painting is the good shepherd is always around. The good shepherd is always around. And the good shepherd, I just have to stress this to you, is that he's always talking to you. He's always saying something to you all the time. If, if you feel like Jesus is just being silent to you, you're not listening. Because he's always talking to you. His voice is always somewhere because he knows the thief is there. He knows those that are trying to rob, kill, and destroy. He cares about, he knows you by name. And he is always gathering you, calling you to himself. He's always calling you to follow him so that he can take care of you. Jesus says you can, you can learn to hear his voice. Jesus' voice is always that voice that's kind of saying some stuff to us and like, huh? What? Because a lot of times the voice that Jesus is saying to us is telling, is saying, do something we don't want to do, right? That when you hear the voice of Jesus talking to you, there's all these other voices. Whoa, 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 wait just a minute. No, 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 no I don't, I, that's not going to work. I don't want to do that. But that voice does not go away. Have you ever been trying to get something organized and, and get it to work and there's this voice inside of you here that says, not going to work, not going to work, don't do it, don't do it, it'll never work out. And what do we do? We ignore that voice and we listen to all the others that saying, well, it could work. I read a book and it said it was work. I saw a YouTube where it was, somebody was successful for it, with it, you know, like, and, and we think, yeah, and I want to do it because I'm tired of what I'm doing. I want to do this. And that voice won't go away. Do, do you think, do you think Jesus just, you know, he's saying, don't do that. Don't do that. That's not good for it. You. you think when Jesus is saying that, he's going to say, okay, um, wh whatever you want to do. He doesn't do that. The Bible says that he is consistent. He never changes. Think about it. He's God. He hasn't changed from before creation to after when this whole creation is, is gone and we're in eternity. You think he's going to change in your little old lifetime for the situations that are going on in your life? No. Not going to change. Have you, have you ever had, this is serious, have you ever had that voice? It's like, don't do that. It's not going to work. It's not good for you. It's going to turn out 
all bad. You know, you were meant for more than this. I didn't, you know, you weren't created. God didn't put you here to do something like that. And have you heard that voice? And it just like, it's, it screams like, how can I turn it off? How can I get rid of it? It, it haunts that thing inside of us that we, we call our self-awareness and consciousness, you know? Like, whose voice is that? That's Jesus' voice. Don't do it. Don't do it. There's, a, there's that, that voice. You've heard it before. You were created for something better than this. I mean, did, did, may, maybe you, maybe you, uh, maybe you dated a few people, you know, before you settled down and found Mr. Wonderful and Mr. Right, you know? Maybe you dated a few of them, and, and, and while you were dating, you just came to this conclusion, like, I, 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 I think I'm, I'm, I think I'm supposed to be looking for someone more than this, right? You know, Jesus tells you that's not the guy, that's not the girl. He tells you that. Now, maybe you don't want to listen at the moment because of the feelings and all that kind of stuff. But he's saying, I, I have something different for you. I meant some, I have a different plan for your life. That would be the wrong, that would be the wrong path. And, the, and these times in our lives where, where things aren't, things just aren't working out and you just, you just sort of like, you give up on it. Does that ever happen to you? You just, I don't want to do this anymore. I give up. I give up. I want to quit. And then there's something inside of you that says, don't quit. Don't quit. And, and you think to yourself, there's no hope in that. There's no hope in that. I, I can't do this one more day. Have you ever felt that? That anxiety? You can't, you got to quit today. You got to leave today. You got to do whatever you're going to do to, to, to break whatever thing that's going on in your life that you just can't stand. You got to do it today. And there's some voice inside of you that's saying, that's not right. It's not the right path. It's not what I have for you. Don't give up hope. You hang in there. Don't give up. I don't know if you visited our Facebook page, you know, this past five months. You know, that's, that's what's on the headline mast of our Facebook page, right? You're going to get through this. Yeah, I mean, people are getting to the place where they say, I don't know if we can get through this. I don't know if we're going to make it. I don't know if I can stand with, stand being at home with my family any longer, right? And I, I, I just, I need to go, I need to go and, and eat some Mexican food. You know, or something, I just have to do it, you know? And you just can't stand it anymore, you know? And there's this voice inside of his no, you don't have to do that. Because that voice doesn't want us to give up. That voice is saying, hang in there. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. And, I, and I've said that most Sundays to you. Hang in there. You're going to make it. You're going to be okay. You know, even, even when you get to a point where you give up on God and you say, I've had it. Have you had those moments? I'm going to give, I give up on God. Even when you feel like that, I'm going to give up on God. Be honest. When you said, I'm going to give up on God, was there, was there some voice saying, no, don't do that? Yes, I will. No, don't do that. How many times have you said, I'm never going to church again. I don't like that pastor. I, I don't like that church. God, Jesus never answers my prayers. I'm never, never going to go again. And, you, and, you, and you're sitting there and you said, there's just no hope. And then, and then someone close to you says, listen, you just need to come to church with me today. And you say, okay. It happens. It happens. Why? Because that voice, no, no. Jesus has that tone. 
He, sp he speaks to us those ways. And, and, and that, voice, that voice sometimes, it just, it sounds like our own voice. It sounds like our own voice inside of us. And even, even when we've given up on God, you've read your Bible. And it says that G Jesus hasn't given up on you. He hadn't given up on you. If, if, if you'll just, if you'll spend some time every day reading the Bible, read, you can start anywhere. Just, just read a section of the scripture and, and just watch out for the things that God says to people. The kind of things he wants them to do. The kind of things that, that, that he wants them to change. Read through the Gospels of Jesus as he's working with people and talking to them. And you know, he's, he's, he's always saying the same thing to most people. And I'm telling you, he is saying those same things because he's inconsistent to each and every one of us. Because none of us are living a life that is totally different than lives people have been living for a long, long time. And Jesus, I mean, listen to the voice of Jesus as in the Bible where Jesus is encouraging people, where God is calling people to be faithful, to be patient, to trust in him, to give their hearts to him, uh, that he's called you and, that, and, and, and listen to the words that the Bible talks about the cross and what Jesus Christ did for you. And no matter what you've done and no matter how... How far away from God you are. The cross reaches to where you are and calls you into forgiveness. And, and that forgiveness is, is God's new start. And he's going to be with you and he's going to help you. Over and over again, Jesus says in the Bible, you're going to get through this. You're going to get through this. You're going to be okay. I love you. I love you. I love you. That's what the cross means. Yeah, but Jesus, you don't know what I've done in my life. I love you, I love you, I love you. I haven't been a good boy, I haven't been a good girl. I love you, I love you, I love you. I don't think I can make it. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. That voice that screams when we feel like nobody cares about us and, and we're of no worth. A voice says, but you matter. You are valuable. God made you for something important. That you're not stuck and you're just, you're not... You're not beyond help. You are forgivable. And you are able to be healed by the power of Christ working in your heart. There is hope for you. I am with you. Come follow me. Come be with me. I know the way. And I'll be with you. And that voice, there's a voice in your brain that is screaming those things to you. You can learn to hear those voices. And the way that we do that, we just, just read your Bible a little bit each day. When, when, you, when you feel like the bad voices are winning, then, then you go to a trusted Christian friend and just ask him to help you out. And I guarantee you, you will hear the voice of Jesus coming out of their lips. Because Jesus can use them to speak to you. And I'm telling you, when you stop and you say, Jesus, quiet the voices, let me hear your voice, you will, you will learn to recognize his, his voice quicker, louder, and his voice will lead us safely and guide us in a life that is full, what it was meant to be, being used the way he wants it. He wants our lives to be used and he will be with us every step of the way. His rod and his staff, you know, they kind of bump us when we get out of bounds, when we go the wrong way. He leads us to the right places, into the pastures beside the still waters. When things get rough, he comes and he, he leads you through the valley of the shadow of the death. And that's a bad place and that's a horrible place. And maybe you're in that place right now, but what Jesus says, I'm going to lead you through it. You're not going to stay there. You're not going to get lost there. I'm going to lead you through it. I know the way. 
I'll be with you. And he's going to lead you all the way until you get in the presence of God for all eternity. That's your good shepherd. Listen to his voice. You can do this. You can do this. And I want to challenge you to do it this week. Every day, every minute, when, when your brain just kind of rests and there's a little bit of silence, you just say, what, what's Jesus talking to me right now? And you're going to be amazed. You're going to hear Jesus talking to you because he's your good shepherd. You can do it. You can do it. You know, we're, I'll be praying for you this week. God has plans for this week. And, and it's, this, is really, this is really how God wants to have an impact in our families and in our community and our world. So we got a mission. And you be about that mission this week. Can you do that? That would be great. Listen to the voice.